ladies and gentlemen peace be upon you and good morning to you all I'm very pleased in the beginning to welcome you all in this uh, event uh, that is uh, held uh, in cooperation uh, with uh, the UAE German Relation Committee. Of course, uh, it aims to explore the relations uh, between the United Arab Emirates uh, and uh, the Republic uh, of uh, Germany based uh, on the historic relations between the two nations and the understandings and the joint uh, interest uh, and the several uh, areas of cooperation and collaboration between the two countries uh, since the announcement of the strategic uh, partnership in 2004. This event uh, is uh, held in the context uh, of uh, the transformations and the changes uh, that uh, are taking place uh, in the regional uh, context uh, and uh, internationally in Asia and uh, in the Middle East as well as in North Africa. And the two countries are uh, trying uh, to utilize uh, the opportunities uh, that are existing in order to develop their strategic partnerships in all areas. At the level of uh, politics, the two countries are uh, trying hard to enhance the international stability and the regional stability throughout uh, the design of uh, potential solutions for the conflicts that are taking place in Ukraine, in Yemen, Syria, or Sudan, or the Sahel, and even regarding the nuclear program of Iran and the behaviors of Iran in the region. Economically speaking, the United Arab Emirates is number one as a trade partner to Germany in the Arab world, while Germany is the biggest trade partner for the United Arab Emirates in Europe. And the two countries are aiming to enhance their cooperation, especially that the German economy is based on knowledge and creativity, innovation and advanced industries. Also, it is among the uh, countries that are leading in uh, digital era and also the fourth industrial revolution, while the United Arab Emirates is uh, a trade hub and a financial center at the regional level. The United Arab Emirates is also diversifying its economy and uh, utilizing uh, the artificial intelligence and the uh, fourth industrial revolution. It's why there are uh, joint and common interests uh, and uh, several horizons to enhance uh, the relations between the two countries in technology and in several areas, especially that the two countries are representing leading countries uh, in their regions. Because of the war of Ukraine, Germany is trying uh, to reinforce its effort uh, in uh, achieving uh, the energy sufficiency in order uh, to disengage from the Russian gas and oil. And also it uh, aims uh, to multiply its efforts in renewable energy in order to make this uh, objective uh, happen. And in order to achieve another objective, which is uh, reducing uh, the carbon emissions, uh, the, United Amer the United Arab Emirates is uh, trying uh, to diversify the renewable energies and invest more in uh, this uh, area and reach uh, the carbon neutrality by 2050. 
It led several initiatives in this regard, and uh, it's worth uh, mentioning that uh, during the visit uh, of uh, the climate affairs uh, and the protection uh, of uh, the climate in uh, March, uh, 2022, the two countries signed a new partnership in the clean hydrogen, and this was in the context of the strategy of the two countries to shift into the renewable energy and protecting the environment. Militarily speaking, Germany is among the exporters of arms to the United Arab Emirates and this is in the context of the diversification of arms resources and sources and in the same regard the United Arab Emirates is working hard to strengthen its military defense capability industry and uh, looks uh, at the German Republic as a reliable partner. For the first time, uh, the two countries uh, agreed uh, to manufacture a missile that is made by the United Arab Emirates in 2021. Culturally speaking, the two countries engaged in several efforts to promote tolerance, coexistence, and combating terrorism, extremism, and all forms of extremism. And also because the two countries tried hard to develop their bilateral strategic effort, there has been a momentum built by meetings and exchange of diplomatic visits between the two sides. This was evident in the visit of the United Arab Emirates Minister of Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation, Sheikh Abdullah bin Zayed Al Nahyan to Berlin on May 25th, 2022. <coughs> and also, we don't have to forget that uh, the German delegation, headed by President Frank Walter Steinmeier, visited Abu Dhabi to pay condolences on the passing away of the late Sheikh Khalifa bin Zayed and congratulate His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed on his election as the United Arab Emirates' new president. I would like also to refer to the selection of Germany as the guest of honor in the 31st edition of the Abu Dhabi International Book Affair that was organized the this month, uh, at the late of, uh, of this month, uh, at the end of this month. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, throughout uh, these uh, panels and this symposium, we provide an excellent opportunity for policy makers and experts from both countries to discuss ways of enhancing the strategic partnership between the two countries through five uh, panels. The first panel will discuss uh, the foreign policy and regional security understandings based on mutual interest. The second one will touch upon emerging economic and investment opportunities in trade, industry, technology, and also space uh, in addition uh, to health uh, and other areas. The third panel deals with the cooperation potential between the two countries in conventional and new energy and combating climate change and also the food security. The fourth panel will discuss uh, the obstacles in defense cooperation and arms sales in all forms, while the fifth and final panel will highlight the potential cooperation between the two countries in enhancing cultural communication and promoting the values of tolerance, dialogue, and coexistence culturally, religiously, and always to combat the extremism and religious uh, 
terrorism in Muslim societies and Islamophobia in European societies. Panelists from both the Emirati and German sides will participate in these discussions and I'm really delighted to welcome all participants in this event, uh, particularly those coming from our friendly state of the Federal Republic of Germany and uh, who are honoring here in the capital Abu Dhabi. I would like also to seize the opportunity to thank the German Arab Friendship Association for its part partnership with the Emirates Policy Center in this symposium and to His Excellency Dr. Otto Weishoui, President of the German Arab Friendship Association and former Bavarian Minister for Economic Affairs, Infrastructure, Transport and Technology in the government of Bavaria in Germany. To conclude, I would like to say that I look forward to valuable ideas and insight raised in the panels, hoping that they will contribute to deepening and expanding the strategic relations between the two countries. Once again, I would like to welcome you all and peace be upon you. Dear Dr. Ebtesam al Kitbi, first of all, I would to sincerely thank you as our host for having us and organizing this event. We are honored and delighted to cooperate with the Emirates Policy Center in this workshop and also thank your team for the hospitality and organization of a high-level program for our delegation. I welcome especially all guests from the Arab side. We are very glad to have you here and we are very glad to get in contact with you to discuss a lot of questions we have bilateral to discuss. I am delighted that the delegation of outstanding experts have joined our delegation from Germany for this opportunity to exchange with partner in the region. I am also grateful that you, dear Mr. Hinterdobler, are accompanying us as representative of the state government of Bavaria. Since 2019, we, the German Arab Friendship Association, and our partner, the Federal Academy for Security Policy, conduct the German Arab Gulf Dialogue for Security and Cooperation with the support of and in coordination with the General Secretary of the Gulf Cooperation Council and the Federal Foreign Office. The great interest in the conference, the number and above all the quality of the participants confirmed us that there is a great need for such a forum for exchange. We are glad that we were again able to address a large specialist audience with our outline conferences in the last two years even under the conditions of COVID-19, it was a problem. And we are looking forward to having again a conference in the life in Berlin of September. Dear Dr. al Ketbi, you addressed a lot of questions we have to discuss and we have, if possible, to solve together. We, I may say it, are interested in a strong cooperation in different fields, in the fields of economic affairs, in energy questions, also future energy questions, maybe not only oil and gas, it's also different questions for the future to the regeneration energies. We are interested in cooperation in politics. Uh, we see that there are a lot of problems in the area, in this region, but we see also the constructive role of your country and uh, we are interested to get information more about that. We are interested on the security also. We see the problems in the areas in the world if you don't have security. Uh, every development is stopped then 
and every development is destroyed then. We are interested on cooperation in research and development. We are interested on industrial cooperation. We see that your country is doing a lot of things in this area and make a lot of steps to come forward in all these questions. And we are interested to get to know your interests, your aim, your future aspects. We are interested also to get more information about the problems in the region. And I may say, VAE made a great development. I was here several times, former time, as a Minister of Economic Affairs in Bavaria. Uh, it was about 20 years ago. It was about 15 years ago. Uh, and their interest in Germany was not yet so big. It grew up and grew up. And, but I see also your country had made a big development in that time. It's not comparable with the time about 20 years ago. It's wonderful. And uh, therefore, we are interested in a good partnership, we are interested in a cooperation, and that's the reason why we are here. We see you as a partner, we see you as a future cooperation partner, and we want to do our, we want to use our opportunities, our possibilities to come to a good partnership with you. And if this conference is helping for this aim, it should be a good conference. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Sir. Uh, these nice words uh, from the German side and and this warm welcoming for this uh, relation which we do here in uh, UAE look uh, to Germany as a major power uh, in Europe and, and a major friend for us in, uh, in Europe and we do uh, highly evaluate this value this this relation and 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 this part as epc always believe in that relation and and that's why we are holding this uh workshop uh with this we will start the first session and here i call uh dr uh Mr. Byrne, please, to take your seat. And many, many thanks. We will start this uh, first uh, session regarding uh, understanding about the foreign policies and regional security. I would like to welcome Ambassador Berndt. The floor is yours. <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, Dr. al uh, Dear participants uh, from the Arab side, especially from Abu Dhabi, uh, dear participants from uh, Germany, let me just say how, how delighted I am that I can be back again to Abu Dhabi. Uh, I had the honor and privilege to accompany uh, Chancellor Gerhard Schröder very often to Abu Dhabi. This was a time where we had lots of hopes and expectations into our strategic partnership. Uh, which had just been proclaimed a few days before. Uh, I must say, um, I still have the feeling that we are not really um, been, that we have not been in a position to really use all the potential which is in this, this partnership. And uh, I would consider also this event today as an attempt to further revitalize uh, and to re-energize uh, this strategic partnership. I think this is especially important, of course, in times like the ones which we are facing right now, because if I'm not mistaken, 
we are really facing a decade of uh, tremendous global instability, of uh, economic reorientation, of uh, systemic power struggles. Uh, and I think uh, if we would still need a challenge, then uh, the challenge consists in somehow managing, of course, all these challenges in front of us and this together. And I could not imagine a better partner for ourselves in this region than Abu Dhabi, because I'm also struck when I come here uh, by the progress which your country has made in each and every aspect. I'm not just referring um, to uh, economic development, I'm not just referring to construction, but this country, a relatively small country, is really the regional powerhouse here. And uh, I can only say I'm full of admiration for that. Um, when I remember the first time that we met, uh, we came to the conclusion that uh, part of our mission is to really um, invest more in common understanding, that we have to learn from each other instead of lecturing each other, that we must profit uh, from each other. Uh, and I think we uh, have been making progress, and I would also consider that today um, we will make another step into that direction. Progress in, for especially for example, identifying, of course, the commonality of our interests. I think in the meantime we have all understood that peace and stability in this region directly affects our peace and stability, and vice versa. Also what is happening in Europe, the war now in the Ukraine, it also affects, of course, peace and stability in this region, but also on a global scale. Uh, it has become almost a global war against the poor countries of the world, if you just look at food security and other implications. Um, I think uh, I owe it to you uh, to also explain to you a little bit the state of mind in which we are in Germany due to the war in, in, in Ukraine, because I think that will determine a little bit our approach to security issues in the future. Um, for us, I think in Germany, Putin's invasion into Ukraine was more than a wake-up call. Uh, Chancellor Schroeder reacted by, by proclaiming the Zeitenwende, you know, a 180% shift in paradigms. Uh, I think this could only have happened because uh, we have really been living in an unreal world. We have been a little bit like Frodo and Bilbo in the Shires, uh, who enjoyed a peaceful world, who were surrounded by friends only, and suddenly, you know, Middle Earth struck, and we find ourselves facing now the apocalyptic riders. Um, and, and this, of course, has enormous consequences. Uh, the first ones were, of course, the overhaul of our security concept, uh, the 100 billion package for the re-enabling of our Bundeswehr to um, be able to also, uh, you know, defend Germany and allied uh, territory has finally been uh, decided upon. Um, we have recommitted ourselves to the 2% uh, defense budget um, um, uh, contribution um, uh, to NATO. Um, we have helped in revitalizing NATO, which uh, Macron said only two years ago was brain dead. Um, I would even think that our uh, common uh, European uh, security policy has got a shot in the arm. Uh, in short, the era, as some people said, of pacifist post-heroism in Germany is finally coming to an end. Um, I think uh, this is, will, will, will at least uh, justify hopes and expectations also in this part of the world that you will face a more realistic and perhaps a less lecturing Germany, a less moralizing Germany. Um, at least my hope is uh, that um, um, we have understood a couple of things namely that the Romans were not that wrong when they said, if you want to have peace, you must prepare for war. Civis parabellum. 
But I also hope that we have not overlearned that lesson, because uh, I think we must also take into account that the real changes in Europe happened because of the combination in NATO's double decision of two things. First, a short deterrence on the one side. This we must learn again. But on the other hand, of course, also the offer for cooperation, the offer um, to reach out to others and to cope with the challenges um, together. Uh, Pankaj uh, Mishra, the uh, famous Indian politologist, has also warned us against another danger. Uh, we in Germany, we tend to very much compare what is happening right now to the appeasement policy before the Second World War. The lesson of that is obviously that we shall not surrender to the use of force or the threat of force. But I think Pankaj was also right when he said he is reminded of 9-11. And 9-11 obviously led to an overreaction which destroyed whole regions, especially this region, of course, and we still feel the aftermath. So also in that respect, I think we must not overreact. Uh, what are the implications for our partnership? I would submit um, there are a couple of them. Um, you, Dr. al you have already referred, of course, to the obvious, namely our need to reduce our dependency from Russian gas and Russian oil. In other words, we must, I think, establish a very comprehensive energy partnership, especially in terms of green energy. But uh, important as energy is, I don't think that this covers the whole picture. There is so much more to this. To, to, to. At the end of the day, the real challenge is, given all these dangers which I mentioned, how do we make our societies, how do we make our political systems, how do we make them more resilient? And obviously, the withdrawal into the nation state alone, whether it be America first or France first or Germany first, will not help us very much. I think instead of uh, less cooperation, we need more cooperation. We have to reach out. We have to find partners, especially partners who share our visions of multilateral cooperation and of course also our belief into the values contained in the United Nations Charter. Um, well, um, let me just refer to a couple of things which I think will be important for you. I think um, a Germany realizing that peace cannot be preserved alone by good intentions and by political dialogue alone, I think uh, a Germany which has understood that uh, if you deny a country which is being attacked by another country, the arms to defend itself is only aiding and abetting the aggressor. I think in the long run, not tomorrow or the day after tomorrow, that must have also an impact on the way in which we look at our arms export uh, regimes, uh, which were controlled up to now, you know, by this dogma, uh, no weapons into uh, regions of tension. But if you do that, you might face the consequences which you have right now in Ukraine. I think um, at the same time, of course, you will not find a Germany which will become more bellicose. I think what we will hopefully become is more realistic, more responsible, more assertive, uh, and also with your help, also um, more uh, resilient. And I would also submit that a less moralistic, less naive, less dogmatic Germany will be better prepared to develop a more sober and realistic appreciation of the value of partnerships like the one which we have um, with Abu Dhabi and with the uh, Gulf Cooperation Council countries as a whole. Um, we will hopefully also show the appreciation, more appreciation for other civilizations for the value systems of these civilizations. We will uh, discover again that regional stability is an extremely valuable good which we should try to support rather than concentrating or focusing on the missionary export uh, of our own values and concepts which has just so miserably failed in Afghanistan and in other parts um, of the world. 
Obviously, this is uh, my personal view. I don't think that we are already in that state of mind, but I see at least that we are developing into that direction, and I would really submit that will make our partnership uh, more productive, more forward-looking, and it will enable us to face the challenges in common action. And I think the task of us right now in this session is to identify a couple of fields in which we can come to common action. Um, I think there are lots of opportunities, not only with respect to these regional conflicts, as I said, but also with respect, for example, to the security architecture of the region. It would be, to a certain extent, my ambition that we can develop some recommendations um, towards our governments, but also towards uh, our societies at large, uh, concerning the way forward, the way into the future, which is the subject, of course, of this conference. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ambassador. Uh, I do appreciate what you mentioned about understanding the others coming from cooperation based on understanding the differences rather just uh, similarities between uh, the countries which is, shows that there is no one path in the history for development. Each country has its own path based on its uh, historical background, based on its uh, values and, and norms. So now I'm going to moderate myself. And I will hold myself not to be uh, uh, too much comprehensive. Uh, I'm going to talk in Arabic. Please, Ambassador, if you will put your uh, headphone. My intervention will be uh, tackling the horizons of uh, promoting uh, the understanding between the UAE and uh, Germany regarding uh, the uh, issues of common interest uh, in, uh, in their foreign policy and how can uh, both countries to assert uh, uh, their cooperation to promote peace and uh, stability and security in uh, uh, both worldwide and regional environments. My intervention emanates uh, from the uh, hypothesis of uh, and it is a main one, definitely. We are talking here about the current uh, changes worldwide and uh, regional changes as well, whether European or, or Middle Eastern, which will push Germany and uh, the UAE to play a very important and vital role in the international system and regional system of each and every one of them and pushes them forward to promote the understanding and common coordination to promote security and stability in uh, the Middle East and uh, North Africa in particular. Before uh, I uh, enter into the gist of my hypothesis, uh, 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 my intervention, I would like to mention that uh, the relations between both countries, uh, which started uh, in the year 1972, has uh, witnessed, and uh, we are celebrating uh, the 50-year anniversary of this relationship between Germany and the UAE. It has uh, witnessed. two uh, phases. The first one is to uh, carry out the strategic partnership between two th uh, in 2004. According to uh, Ambassador Philip Kerman, the Director General of uh, uh, Middle East and North uh, Africa and uh, Latin America, the Ministry of uh, uh, Foreign Affairs in Germany. 
the UAE, as he says, uh, is uh, the only Arab country uh, that uh, uh, Germany has worked on promoting its relationship with it to being a strategic relationship. And uh, the second part of our uh, discussion regarding the relationship is the visit uh, of Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nahyan and back at the time he was he was a crown prince of uh, Abu Dhabi and deputy supreme commander of the armed forces he visited Berlin in the year 2019 and which uh, moved the relationship between both countries to a new level along with uh, launching the new uh, common statement which put a comprehensive framework for the future of the relations between Germany and the UAE. If we speak about uh, the relationship and the traits of uh, the relationship between both countries, we will notice definitely that uh, there are two general traits for the relationship between Germany and the UAE since its inception in the year 1972. The first one, historically speaking, the economic interests and trade interests uh, constituted the main gist and basis for the relationship between both our countries and even with the Gulf countries definitely in general. Uh, uh, well, whereas other European countries such as uh, Britain and France which uh, preserved uh, a very uh, strong uh, network of relationships with the Gulf countries in the field of politics and security. And uh, even to delve into uh, the uh, very limited uh, defense political uh, framework in the Gulf area comes into uh, the framework of its commitment uh, as part of the NATO or the European Union. And uh, it did not happen in the framework of bilateral relations or uh, multilateral relations with the Gulf countries. Despite all of that, we have uh, noticed how the political uh, uh, security uh, gist of uh, the German-Emirati relations witnessed uh, some developments uh, since the invasion of Iraq since 2003 and then uh, what has been called the Arab Spring 2011. All these changes and events led uh, to the increase of threats emanating uh, from uh, the terrorist groups and the uh, waves uh, of uh, refugees uh, transborder which has increased the German commitment in the region and turning into a calm player, into a very vital player. Which has promoted communication and coordination with the UAE, knowing that it is one of the most important uh, 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 vital players in the regional poli politics. Therefore, it wasn't that weird that both countries will have the principle of uh, bilateral uh, security and uh, dialogue principle uh, on the level of a very high level military cooperation, which led as a result to uh, signing an agreement at the end of the year 2003 uh, for cooperation in the field of uh, training uh, the uh, uh, Iraqi armed forces. Uh, the main essence of these relationships is uh, that there was a vast uh, agreement regarding international and regional uh, issues between Germany and the UAE. And uh, there hasn't been any crucial uh, problems between Berlin and Abu Dhabi regarding these issues. And uh, despite all that, 
there were two files that uh, witnessed uh, a disagreement in opinion between both countries in the beginning, but they were able to uh, increase the uh, common agreement uh, regarding those two files. First of all, we are talking here about the nuclear, Iranian nuclear program. Germany has uh, supported uh, the uh, um, uh, agreement of the uh, common work uh, plan, JCPOA, uh, which was uh, agreed upon between the five uh, big superpowers in addition to Germany and Iran in the year 2015. And uh, then uh, Berlin uh, 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 refused the withdrawal of uh, the management of Donald Trump in the year 2018, whereas the UAE has been reserved uh, regarding the agreement in the beginning because it did not solve the uh, uh, threats emanating from the uh, 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 Iranian rocket program or the militias that Iran is uh, supporting in the region. And this program or agreement has launched the policies of uh, Iranian hegemony in the region. Therefore, we uh, find that it has supported uh, this, uh, the step of uh, the Trump administration. Whereas Germany at the moment is uh, in the negotiations in Vienna to revive the uh, nuclear agreement between Iran and uh, the current president's uh, administration, President Biden. But Germany has uh, come close to this uh, perspective, the UAE perspective, and the remaining Gulf countries regarding the necessity of solving uh, Iran's uh, regional uh, activities, destabilizing uh, the region. In addition uh, to uh, the threats emanating from the program of Iran for uh, ballistic uh, missiles, uh, which uh, doesn't really cover the Middle East and North uh, Africa or uh, the uh, Gulf area, but it touches also the European countries, including Germany. Uh, this, uh, as for the second file, which is the war in Yemen. As a result of the uh, German uh, traditional uh, policy, which is based uh, on refusing to uh, export arms uh, to countries uh, uh, in uh, conflicts, the uh, uh, government of Angela Merkel in the year 2018 has been a uh, pressured parliamentary to uh, impose an embargo on exporting arms to uh, uh, all parties uh, part of the Yemeni war, including the UAE. Participating in the military uh, activities as part of the Arab alliance to support legitimacy. But uh, the government of Merkel has uh, uh, taken out the UAE from this embargo in May 2019. Therefore, those two files. I have spoken about these two files. Why? Because they have uh, personified the capability of both countries uh, to continue dialogue amongst each other and to trespass uh, uh, the difference in opinion and perspectives uh, towards some of the uh, regional uh, policies and to reach uh, certain agreements and uh, settlements that would preserve the objectives and the interests of both countries. Therefore, what are the new changes that uh, are impacting the future of the relations between both countries, between Germany and the UAE? Emanating from this main hypothesis, which I started my uh, intervention according to the long uh, history of the relations between both countries and uh, the common interests. In my opinion, uh, that uh, both uh, relations between both countries will have further interest between both leaders, the leaders of both countries. 
and will witness a quantum leap in the next phase, not only in the, in the field of uh, economy and commerce, but the uh, gist of uh, this uh, relation will include uh, uh, politics, security, in addition to energy, and uh, the role will, uh, their common role will be promoted in preserving the international and regional stability. There are a number of uh, changes and elements that uh, would push forward uh, this scenario. One of the most important elements is that Europe is witnessing a war in Ukraine and that uh, this war is about uh, a conflict between Russia and the Western countries. Uh, its uh, areas are still open uh, and as a result Germany has taken uh, or, uh, decisions, historical decisions to carry out changes in the, the prim principles of its uh, military politics that uh, would uh, um, that might uh, turn into a, a, a very uh, important military force amidst an international regime uh, that would allow uh, uh, different uh, uh, polar systems, according to uh, the Chancellor Schultz in, uh, in, on the 27th of February 2022. Germany will consecrate 2% of its GDP to, uh, for defense on a yearly basis, and it will invest 100 billion euros in the uh, uh, military apparatuses this year, which means that Germany will become the first European military force when it comes to expen uh, spending, uh, advan uh, and uh, it's the first country advancing France and Britain. These decisions represent a change in the German uh, politics, uh, which since the end of the Second World War has uh, been directing uh, uh, the expenses of Germany to building the economy and to be satisfied with uh, building a very limited military force for uh, uh, defense purposes and not uh, to have a desire to uh, uh, be uh, linked uh, into external scenes which will demand a huge military capabilities this change and this uh, uh, turnover in the uh, um, German military force will lead to the increase of its role on both European and international arenas and this will reflect uh, in general on the Middle East and the Gulf area in particular in return, the UAE is witnessing an increase in its regional uh, role and international role, along with promoting its strategic uh, partnerships with uh, the uh, big forces and uh, uh, being part of the Abrahamic Accord, which is keen on re engineering the regional system and to head since 2020. 20 towards dialogue and building concordances and settling uh, the conflicts in the region. This means that both countries, uh, Germany and the uh, USA as two power forces, uh, they can, through common work, they can play a very important role in the international uh, politics and regional politics. Second, the imports of oil and gas from the Gulf used to represent a, 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 a part which helps the needs of Germany regarding the fact that it used to depend on oil and gas from Russia. Now, the German uh, policy to lessen dependence on the energy imports, Russian energy imports, uh, as a result of the Ukrainian war. 
This will promote the importance of the Gulf area as part of the strategy of Germany for, uh, uh, for the energy security. Therefore, we have witnessed uh, definitely this uh, diplomatic uh, German movement towards the Gulf area, including uh, the uh, UAE to promote the gist of energy in the relationships between both countries, as mentioned uh, by uh, Mr. Ambassador uh, Bernd. This will strengthen ties between uh, the UAE and Germany and will add uh, a strategic, uh, a new strategic dimension. Third, which is an element linked to what has been aforementioned that both countries agree that there is a need to turn and to this renewable energy to promote uh, energy security and to uh, lessen uh, the carbon emissions and achieve uh, the uh, climate neutrality in the year uh, 20. Uh, 45 according to uh, the uh, German objectives and 2050 according to the Emirati objectives. Whereas Germany has the uh, technology advanced, technology which represents one of uh, the uh, clean energies and uh, uh, diminishing uh, the carbon emissions. The UAE has uh, the uh, main elements which enables it uh, to be a main uh, actor in this field. In addition to the plans and other uh, uh, strategies uh, and uh, the pioneering initiatives, and uh, the uh, interests of both countries meet in developing their own uh, relationships uh, in the field of renewable energy, uh, uh, protecting the climate. And the latest development that would ascertain this is uh, the uh, cooperation agreement in the field of clean hydrogen which was signed uh, during the visit uh, of uh, the Minister of Economic Affairs and Protecting uh, uh, Climate, Dr. Robert Haidt, to the UAE uh, on the uh, 21st of uh, March 2020. Fourth, relationships or the horizons of relationships between both countries are a not built only on the economic objectives and energy objectives. It should really be linked in hypothesis and rapprochement and values. Both countries represent a very important uh, 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 paradigm in both areas, whether uh, when it comes to the economic and financial strength and the uh, technological and scientific advancement and even on the level of uh, governance and the local policies, uh, which are effective, and on the level of uh, internal invest uh, stability in both countries. The UAE as well is one of the uh, countries which has a uh, political and uh, special political and cultural uh, element uh, and uh, this uh, liberal cultural environment relatively an economic uh, freedom and intellectual freedom uh, which uh, makes it uh, very easy on the Germans to think in expanding the fields of cooperation which will uh, uh, Stress pass the elements of economy. All these elements, in my opinion, uh, pushes forward uh, for our relations uh, t to be stronger than before and would promote understanding and would promote coordination between both countries when it comes to the files and, cr and regional crises and uh, the international issues such as energy security and uh, uh, protecting climate change and uh, food security. And this will uh, establish a strategic partnership, very strong strategic partnership between both countries, of course, as uh, Mr. Ambassador 
has said, which is uh, 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 which goes along with the cultural side, what is called people to people between both countries, whether and uh, the relationships between the civil societies uh, together. Thank you for your kind attention. And I would stop here and open the floor for uh, 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 discussions. We have only 30 minutes for that. Those who would like to talk, kindly um, put your, uh, your names as such. Mr. Muhammad Baharu, go ahead. Peace be upon you. Thank you, Dr. Ibtissam, uh, for uh, hosting us. Uh, I will speak in English. To what Dr. Ibtissam and uh, Ambassador Mutzelberg said about this relationship, uh, Ambassador Mutzelberg has been a very important uh, person in, 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 in the framing of uh, this uh, uh, relationship for a very long time. And I think there is a number of values and some challenges facing this relationship. I will talk about the values first. I think this relation is multidimensionally expandable. It can be expanded in, in different ways. Horizontally, if you want, it can be expanded on the right and on the left. Previously, we've been talking about education, we've been talking about culture, trade, which is more on the left side. Now, with Germany thinking more about security, it can also be expanded on the right side. Uh, so uh, this is a new way of, of looking at that. But also in the middle is technology transfer, which helps on the right and on the left as well. So hopefully uh, we're going to face a more, let's say, balanced approach when it comes to on, on the horizontal aspect. But there's also the vertical aspect, which this relationship can be expanded up because of the value of uh, Germany within the EU. So it can be a major advancement in that but also it can be advanced downwards on the level of uh, states, uh, Emirates in the UAE and regions. In, in, in. So um, region to region type of uh, collaboration is, is very uh, befitting. And I think uh, that the fact that we've got a, a previous minister from Bavaria here signifies that type of, of thing. We also had two representations from Germany at Expo also representing this type of approach. So what about the challenges? One of the major challenges we're facing, and not definitely with Germany, but also with old and new uh, partners, US and Israel, for instance, is the political conformity, the, or lack of political conformity. So from one uh, party to another, things started to change dramatically sometimes. We've seen that with the US, we've seen it also with Israel, and I guess within, you know, uh, uh, within Europe, we have that same type. And maybe what we're doing today here is a way of attracting it, as, as uh, Dr. Tassam said, people to people, this type of, of relationship that is not only at the level of, of uh, policy makers who change within uh, elections and others, uh, I think that may be a way of uh, deflecting it. Uh, the other one is also the changes uh, now uh, on, on, on the global uh, issue, and I think Dr. Tassam mentioned this by talking about the multipolarity or, you know, and, and to what extent are we facing uh, a retreat from multipolarity to the either with us or against us type of, of uh, uh, discourse. And I think there is a possibly uh, a discourse within Germany about this, but also there's a discourse here. So seeing eye to eye could be one of those challenges uh, to us. And then there is the uh, uh, issue of the EU limitation. EU can be an enabler as we have seen recently, but it also can be a disabler in, in, in other ways. And we have also seen, have seen how uh, EU, for instance, when it came to Expo, had a different type of approach, different than that of, of the uh, state uh, members of, of uh, EU. So I think these are issues to be discussed. And uh, again, thank you very much for the uh, presence and uh, the interjections. Thank you. Thank you, Mohammed. Dr. Koch. Um, yes, thank you very much, um, uh, Dr. Ebtesam, also Ambassador Mützelburg, for your remarks, and thank you for the opportunity to be here. Um, let me first just pick up on what Mohammed just said on the political conformity aspect. Um, I think, you know, it was already mentioned that uh, maybe the strategic partnership has 
so far not uh, been uh, used all its potential and could sort of be expanded. I think one important thing is that we do have regular exchanges just like this, so I commend very much the DIFG uh, and the Emirates policy in this, simply putting this event together. And I think one important thing is if we really want to fill the strategic partnership with more, with more substance, we need these events being regular. Um, so I'm hoping, so one recommendation I want to put forward right away is let's make this an annual event because we need to continue to invest in shared analysis. Uh, and I think that would be an important contribution uh, to really uh, move us forward. Um, yes, it's been a wake-up call in, in, in Germany. I think uh, Europe and Germany now finds itself in a position where the Gulf has been for the past decades. <laughs> Uh, uh, you have lived here in, in, in a region full of volatility, uh, security challenges, instability, where conflict has always been sort of uh, possible at any moment. Uh, for a long time, you know, there was the thinking in Europe that uh, the age of war had passed and that war in Europe wouldn't be possible anymore. That certainly uh, uh, has changed now. So it's time to take advantage uh, of that opportunity. I think there is greater realism uh, now emerging in, in Europe. So, um, but I also, I, I'm not so sure whether simply investing now in more uh, military equipment defense exports is necessarily going to be the answer to all those problems. Uh, we need to continue to invest in diplomacy uh, and to other regional exchanges. And if I have here two very specific suggestions, especially on the foreign policy and security front, where I think the UAE and Germany can uh, uh, cooperate and push forward ideas, um, one, is, uh, one thing that I have worked on in, in my center is the idea of a Gulf weapons of mass destruction free zone. I think ultimately the goal has to be uh, the end uh, of, of nuclear weapons in this region. Uh, and this would also be a way to overcome some of the problems of the, uh, the JCPOA at the moment. Uh, I think this idea of a Gulf regional zone as a precursor to a Middle East zone is something that the UAE and Germany can certainly support. Um, a second idea would be to sort of start a regional initiative, uh, an initiative between Germany and the UAE on regional issues. You've already, UAE and Germany have already co uh, cooperated in terms of the Friends of Syria group. You've already had uh, cooperation in terms of Libya. Those are two important areas in the Middle East, I think, that need to be tackled. Uh, there's two other important countries that are important. One is Egypt. Uh, especially now, uh, given the, the increased uh, economic threat also to Egypt in terms of, of wheat uh, and, and potential there for increased stability. I think Germany and, uh, and the UAE can come together on ideas. Um, and the other thing is Iraq. Um, I think Iraq is now is just slowly emerging from, from due to two decades of increased instability. Uh, and Iraq will be important for the whole region. Whatever happens in Iraq will have an impact throughout the whole Middle East. Uh, and again, I think there, there's increased engagement already on, on the UAE uh, in terms of reconstruction, rebuilding parts of Iraq, economic engagement. Uh, I think Germany would also be very interested because again, that supports then stability throughout the region. Uh, so if we can have a greater sort of UAE-German initiative on regular exchanges on what the regional situation looks like and what solutions one can propose, I think that would be one way forward. And finally, I think you need to always, and this is more of a sort of a recommendation also to my Emirati uh, friends, uh, and you also need to remember, of course, that uh, Germany is in Europe, uh, and it's also investment in Europe in the end of the day. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, the EU has finally come out with a, what I think is a very comprehensive and very interesting joint communication with the Gulf. It's finally sort of adopting what I've always argued for a Gulf strategy. So the strategic partnership is called with the Gulf, not just with the GCC, but although most of the content is with the GCC, but I think that's sort of going into the right direction. Uh, but the communication has a lot of valuable points. Uh, I think it takes Gulf interests much more into consideration. I think it accepts the fact that there is increased Gulf agency on, on regional issues. Um, uh, and it accepts also some of the linkages. Uh, that exists between the security of the region and the security of Europe. So there's, there are some new things in there, uh, which I think is important to pick up. Uh, and I think it would be very valuable also for the UAE to look closely at this document and then formulate a response to it uh, and say what, you know, there's a whole a host of issues, and I'm just concentrating here on the foreign and security bit. Of course, there's a whole bunch of other issues on the issues of uh, energy, on climate change, on humanitarian uh, aid, on 
uh, economic trade and investment, all those. Uh, but it would be good also to engage on that because I think there's a real opportunity right now that there are Euro Europe is also listening. Uh, and uh, UAE needs to also push forward. This has a way to be able to announce its own interests uh, more clearly and then come to an agreement on specific ways forward. Thank you very much. Excellent. Thank you, Dr. Koch. Uh, Ambassador Ali Ahmed. Thank you, uh, Dr. Ibtissam, uh, and thank you, Dr. Byrne. Uh, it's, it's really a pleasure to see very familiar faces from Berlin time. Uh, I'm just going to refer to uh, Mr. Koch's uh, remark saying it took a war for Europeans to realize how tough our neighborhood is, basically. But uh, we've always been uh, close, uh, UAE-German relation, uh, when it economically speaking, is a very mature relation. We are talking almost over 20% of the trade coming to the region, come through the UAE. That's a relation we're very proud of. Uh, there was a talk also about the GCPOA uh, and how would that affect the future of the, of the region. I believe maybe the, I will put it like the stars are uh, aligning together. One thing, I would, you go to history and uh, Germany has a very uh, good industrial relation with Iran even before the revolution. And, uh, and they invested in that relation for, for decades. UAE has been always uh, historically a trade uh, partner. Iran has always been a big market uh, to us, the proximity, the distance. And those uh, relations also we invested in, there is generation working you know, across the Gulf, and a trade always been a very big uh, part of our relation. Number three is the, uh, the announced 10 principles for the next 50 years of UAE. One of the main pillars is the economic factor, as well as zero conflict in the, in the region. Now, if we put all those three together uh, between the German relation with Iran, you know, economically, uh, our relation with Iran as well, Add to that, uh, you know, where we're going forward and the economic aspect is a very top priority for us. I know also there is uh, the German-Iranian uh, friendship must be very active. Uh, and we all know the potential that there is available in Iran. If we can put all this together <clears throat> where the goals are coming together, now, we're hoping for a fair GCPOA deal for the world and for Iran as well. But a true openness, economic openness in Iran, it could benefit a lot of partners. Why not UAE and Germany can form something that it would uh, push that true openness and I believe the benefits Will, will, would really be uh, something um, very substantial in the near future because we all realize what is the true openness in, in Iran economically would mean for the, for, for the region and also for the world. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ambassador. Um, um, excuse me, I don't see the name. That's Shinsia, please. Thank you very much, Doctora, and thanks to all. Um Thank you. Inputs already, um, and of course to the Emirates Policy Center and the IFG for for putting this together. Um, I think I agree with Dr. Koch. It is very important um, opportunity um, to have this face-to-face uh, uh, -face discussions. Um, and so the point I want to make, which I think I will develop a little bit more in the energy session where I will be giving initial inputs, is I do think that um, the Russian invasion of Ukraine, um, I mean, we have already from the German side tried to communicate how much of a Zeitenwende, the change of an era is. Um, and I think it also means it's a change of an era with uh, external relations. And it could be, I think, a make it or break it moment 
also for European Gulf relations. And let me elaborate quickly on that. Um, as with my analyst hat on, um, I will be a bit sharper and perhaps a bit less diplomatic um, than my former colleagues, but I think, uh, but than my previous colleagues, but I think the reality is that um, the Gulf and Europe have not really looked at one another, the Gulf monarchies and the Europeans, as truly strategic partners so far. Um, if you look at uh, you know, the progress of relations, these are decades old relations, and they have developed in different ways, but there was always that last mile missing. And I think you already expressed some of the frustrations from the Gulf side uh, towards Germany and Europe in the lack of that extra mile of understanding and strategic alignment. And I think the reason was um, there wasn't truly a feeling on both sides that Europe was a, the, a major strategic partner for Gulf monarchies and that the Gulf monarchies were major strategic interests for Europe. And I think this has been changing to some extent and you can see that in the joint communication of the European Union for a strategic partnership with the Gulf, the one that Dr. Koch, Koch referred to and was published on the 18th of May. Uh, there are some sentences there, and of course, as you know, each and every word is weighted by uh, not only EU officials, but officials of the 27 European governments. So each and every word counts. And there are some sentences in that um, document that recognize the strategic importance of the Gulf and why the Gulf monarchies, in particular the monarchies, are strategically important for Europe. Uh, I think all of them sh need to be taken together um, and the three arguably most important ones are the recognition that you need a strategic dialogue with the UAE and the other Gulf monarchies for uh, their capacity to impact the Mediterranean, um, the importance of the Gulf monarchies as trade and economic partners to core for all of Europe, and the third one, which we will talk and has been greatly increased by the Russian invasion of Ukraine, is the joint, absolutely joint necessity to create an energy partnership that also protects the climate. So there, is, there are things about, um, it's very clear in the strategy that it's uh, you know, one of the, the, the really the, the three pillars. Um, and I think you know, it's, uh, uh, I will just conclude by reiterating Dr. Koch's uh, recommendation. I also think it will be important if the UAE would uh, formulate a response to the strategy. Um, I mean, in as quickly as possible. Of course, you also have had a lot to deal with <laughs> recently in this month. But it would be much appreciated, not only in Brussels, but in the other European capitals. Thank you. Thank you, Cynthia. Uh, Ambassador Sebastian. Thank you very much uh, for the invitation, for setting up this event. Uh, thank you, Ebtisam. Uh, thank you, um, DFG and Hussam, for organizing the trip. Um, so much has been said, and, and I just wanted to, to elaborate on, on two points. The first one is what is happening at the moment in Germany with regards to this Zeitenwende to the change of, of an era. Um, it is a process. It is not finalized yet. So what we see is a, is a very controversial debate and discussion inside Germany. Uh, what does it really mean? Also when it comes to the spending in military, uh, how, how is it spent? So there is a discussion going on and it is not finalized yet. What I wanted to say is uh, when we look um, on Germany um, from an external perspective, maybe expectations are sometimes too high that now Germany is becoming a new player, a new military force, a new military power inside Europe. Um, and I doubt that this will happen. Um, therefore, uh, I think it needs, also be, uh, it needs also to be necessary to, um, uh, to, uh, to balance a little bit uh, what are expectations on Germany, what can Germany really deliver, um, and, and what can it not deliver? Um, at the end, uh, that also plays out uh, when it comes to instruments, how um, UAE-German re relationship or UAE uh, or Germany-Gulf relationship can be enhanced and can be advanced. Um, I think there, there are 
um, there are so many interesting fields of policy in which cooperation can be possible uh, and there is potential for more. Uh, but we still have uh, lacking institutionalized instruments to do so. So therefore, um, I would argue that uh, to focus on specific instruments that are still working, and, and just one example is development cooperation. Sometimes it is, um, it is a very important field for both countries. UAE has emerged as one of the most important providers, not only of humanitarian assistance, but also of development uh, assistance in the last couple of years. It is a very reliable and trustworthy partner with the OECD. It is a participant of the OECD Development Assistance Committee and, and UAA provides on a regular level transparent data and statistic um, on an international level uh, when it comes to foreign aid and development cooperation. Um, this is uh, very unique and this is also, that is what UAE also has in common with Germany, which is, I don't, I don't think I have to mention it, one of the most important global providers of humanitarian assistance and development cooperation um, uh, on, in the world. Uh, so therefore, I see here a lot of potential to work more closely with each other um, because we have um, functioning instruments and we have also similar interests when it comes to the um, uh, when it comes to social cohesion in different um, countries of, of interest, some of them have been mentioned by, by Christian, um, uh, be it, uh, be it um, uh, Iraq, uh, be it Jordan, be it countries in North Africa, etc. Um, and also when it comes to sectors. Uh, so what we also see in the UAE, and that is, uh, that is oftentimes neglected um, in, in the West and also in, in Germany, is a, is a shift in, in providing aid. So it's not only about giving money, it's not only about um, uh, providing um, countries in need with financial assistance. It's also more when it, uh, now it, we see a shift towards more technical cooperation, towards more sustainable approaches uh, to more empowerment, capacity development, etc. cetera, um, uh, to provide uh, uh, youth and women with specific skills and needs. And this is exactly what Germany is doing uh, for decades now when it comes to development cooperation. Um, and also uh, the current situation, COVID-19, um, uh, the war in, in Russia, um, uh, the the economic recession, um, is a is a momentum to to create more synergy effects in order to implement together uh, developmental projects in different uh, parts of the world, um, and I think therefore there is a huge potential and also players that can work together, institutions that can work together inside the UAE and inside Germany. Uh, so far, I, th I think the potential is untapped and, and therefore we need also to raise more awareness for this de developmental perspective um, because at the end it can create a momentum to um, also enhance um, um, people to people contacts which is absolutely needed and also to create, um, let's say also in Germany, um, awareness how such a cooperation with, with the UAE could look like. Because honestly, still there is a lot of reservation when it comes to working together with Gulf monarchies in the German public for so many reasons. Maybe we can address them uh, later uh, throughout this day. But one of the reasons is, um, is a lack of knowledge. And, and uh, of course, when you can reiterate on the efforts that UAE has, has achieved in the last couple of years in terms of development cooperation, that could be a theme in which reputational risks also for politicians inside Germany are significantly lower than in other uh, fields of policy because at the end it is about um, supporting and assisting people in need in the region of our interest uh, with, uh, with specific capacities. And, and therefore that is, uh, that is maybe my suggestion to also focus a little bit more on this policy field. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sebastian. Junat? Yeah, thank you, Itisam. Um, I actually um, wanted to bring back the debate to regional security uh, issues, the understanding, the shared understanding of regional uh, security. And I have uh, not a comment, but a question. Uh, the main game changer to regional security obviously is are the Abraham Accords um, that were signed in Germany, and this is not by chance. So Germany, as a country that has very close relations uh, to Israel and uh, the UAE now being in the forefront 
for uh, normalization uh, with Israel. So I would like to ask, uh, uh, what are the expectations from the UAE, from Germany, with regard to the Abraham Accords? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yeah, briefly, please, because we have to finish. Yeah, it's uh, Tobias. Thank you very much. Um, it's really an honor and a pleasure to be here. Uh, I really think it's a fascinating discussion so far. And I just wanted to point to two things. Um, first of all, I also think that, I mean, regional insecurity is crucial. We have already talked, and we will definitely elaborate on this in a further session, but we have already touched upon points such as energy insecurity that is paramount right now at the Ukraine war. We have also talked a little bit about food security. I just wanted to mention that we also have to talk about water ins insecurity in the region, and especially here in this area. We also have to talk about how to preserve an ecosystem such as the the Gulf Sea here and the neighboring countries, the littoral states, so perhaps this is something we should uh, uh, yeah, elaborate more on a, on a later session. The other point I wanted uh, to, to raise and also to, to ask all the participants and especially to, to ask for an Emirati perspective is the global factor of China. Um, so this is actually also kind of a game and a huge player, I mean, we all know about this, but we don't know exactly the consequences of this. And just to mention here also to, to provide a German perspective that especially now and with all that happens in Russia, there's also a discussion right now in Germany whether we have to lower our dependence, our economic dependence on China as well. Because here we have huge trade investments, especially in the automobile sector. And um, here we have ongoing discussions whether this is a well, kind of a dangerous path we have already embarked on and whether we have to change this. And uh, this is an ongoing discussion, but I would really like to hear what uh, the Emirati perspective also see here on China and um, how this partnership and how we can, we can think of China also as a third partner here and as a very important partner economically for both countries, Germany and the UAE. Thank you very much. Thank you, Tobias. Okay. Uh, I will give uh, Ambassador five minutes and myself three minutes. We will pick and choose whatever you don't have to answer, whatever you have, just uh, what is important for you to, to, to answer. I must say I'm also very fascinated uh, by a debate which unfortunately cannot be deepened due to the shortage of time, and I don't think that we can answer the many questions which have arisen here. Uh, one thing I would like to point out, though, is the recommendation that we've got to continue this dialogue and on a regular basis is for me a very important one, and I hope that we can all agree on that. I also think that the other recommendations which have been mentioned, for example, those of, of Christian Koch should be taken up. I also think that the field, for example, of economic, uh, of, of, of development cooperation is an extremely important one. Uh, I may perhaps add one aspect which has not been mentioned right now. Uh, in Germany, we have, for example, a center of excellent, excellence on um, well, it is called the Center for International Peacekeeping. This is a center which basically analyzes uh, the, not only the crisis areas and, and its needs, but it also analyzes, of course, the possibilities uh, to influence them in terms of conflict management. It is a center which trains uh, peacekeepers, so to say, German peacekeepers. It is a center um, which creates also the dialogue space within the German society for these issues. And I think it does a lot also uh, for the, well, let's say the soft power of Germany. And I just wondered whether it would not be very interesting to also work together in this field between the United uh, Emirates and, and ourselves, because I think this is if, where we can really put our, um, uh, our abilities, our knowledge, our expertise uh, together. Um, the, um, the last point, obviously, um, um, I think also in Germany we've got to analyze, by the way, of course, 
the impact of the recent uh, EU um, uh, um, uh, document um, on, uh, on our future cooperation with the Gulf uh, countries, that is to say the new Gulf strategy, but I can only really uh, repeat the appeal of Chinsia. There are a lot of points of contact, a lot of points of discussion, a lot of points uh, which suggest further action uh, where I would really recommend you to analyze it and to react to that. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ambassador. I'm not going also to answer each question, but I want to to, to mention uh, something also which, which is very important for the relation. Uh, and also it might uh, answer some what you are saying. Since yeah. We assume here in the Gulf we know the European more about their norms, about their values. But also, you lack understanding us. You look at us from your glasses. Because, and this is, uh, can cover the, the other, what we have, which is, sometimes you, you try to, to judge us by your system, by your norms, by your values, which is different here. Let's say about the, the, the the democratic system, which, we, as I said, maybe this area has its own path in development. The, the good governance is how this is the parameter where you judge us. The other thing, you tend to put us all as Arabs or Gulfers in one basket. We have our differences. The Emiratis is different than Saudi, different than Qatari, different than each one of them. We have some similarities, but also in terms of our development, we are different in terms of uh, uh, our uh, uh, features are different. So the other thing which I want also, now you know why I raised all these issues in my intervention? Because this is the real dialogue, if you want. Yes, we, I didn't want this gathering, just shaking hands and, and smiling together, but you should touch the real issues and the hard core issues, which is paved the way for real, a good relation between both sides. Now, the issue of Iran, I did not speak about it. You, you mentioned uh, Christian WMD free uh, zone. It's not our, it's not, the problem is not from our side. I don't think the Emiratis or the Gulfis are against that idea. The problem is from the other side. Now you're talking, what about, now here, what is the German role in this side? Because also you have a good relation with Iran, okay? How can you present this with the Iranian and discuss it? And for, for sake of all of us, uh, from security, security-wise, environmental-wise, okay? If both of us think, I mean, both sides, the Iranian and the Arabs, they think that they will be living in this, they will not be departing this region. So if we want to live together, the conditions should be applied to all of us. This, this gulf is not an Iranian lake, it's not an Arabian lake. It's both, it's gulf is lake. Uh, uh, I do appreciate all recommendation, what we should do from both. And this is needs that we have this dialogue on uh, a yearly basis, we bring more issues, and the issues should not be only economy and security, and we should touch other uh, issues. And here, would, I would say also another, we need more involvement between think tank to think tanks. More in terms, because they, these two can put the policies for both uh, sides. Now, the last, which is uh, Jinan raised at the Abraham Accord, well, 
I said in the beginning, uh, Germany is a major power in Europe and it's becoming a major power globally. So it has a role in pushing this occurs uh, by putting more funds in it. We have Abraham funds that you, this is because still Europe is hesitating to show enthusiasm for this. Okay. Uh, uh, in terms of on, on the ground I'm talking about. It's not about UAE only and Israel to fund that Abraham funds should be coming also from Europe, Germany, mostly, because this is will affect, we are talking about also Palestinian whom they have to have a chance to live and opportunities and a good future. And this is, can, be, can be from all of us. It's not only a Marathi task or Israeli uh, task. And we can have in the future a uh, special session for uh, the Abraham Accord. Here I should stop myself and uh, inviting you for uh, taking a break and a good coffee and little snack. Awarding you for your good behavior and listening. <laughs> Thank you.